Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, tonight's content should be fairly familiar to you. The CDC comes out of, with a new report saying homicides rose in 2020. We already knew that because we're on the cutting edge here of the Second Amendment fight, but of course, and predictably, and per usual, the gun controllers are coming out and saying, well, that's obvious it's because more guns were involved in the system. Even though all evidence is to the contrary, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm going to pick this apart. I'm going to show you guys how to pick this apart because there is evidence upon evidence upon evidence in this report that they are touting that does not prove that guns are the problem. It's people are the problem. And that's what we're going to talk about. This is an important one to send out, guys, because you're going to hear about this more and more. But we're going to get right in front of it. We're going to send them back to the drawing board because that's what we do on this channel. Everything is linked in the description box below for your own review if you'd like to examine the data yourself. I'm going to do a quick read from our sponsor who made this video possible. And then we are going to hit it and hit hard on the other side. Now, I know a lot of you out there like to repair and upgrade your own guns. If you're looking for a way to take your hobby to the next level, Sonoran Desert Institute can help. The online programs at SDI cover armor courses, gunsmithing, ballistics, woodworking and finishes, shooting sports management, and more. Plus, the tools and materials are shipped to your door for hands-on practice. It's never been a better time to get an education that you can actually use on the job, so what are you waiting for? Visit sdi.edu in the description box below, and thank you to SDI for making this video possible. Now, let's get to the brass tacks, and let's get down to this, because this is really important. The things they hit here are easy to refute if you just read their own words. This came out today. CDC report. U.S. gun homicides spiked 35% from 2019 to 2020. Again, this little game with the headlines. That seems really bad and really obscene. Well, let's keep going. Let's dive in a little bit deeper. The U.S. firearm homicide rate spiked 35% in 2020, the first full year of the coronavirus pandemic rising to the highest level in almost three decades of record keeping, according to data released this week by the CDC. Now, it's important. Keep in mind, three, almost three decades. That's the early 1990s. Keep in mind, Americans have been buying guns that entire time at a pretty constant increasing rate. Okay? Keep that in mind. Now, let's keep going. Got a few more things to set this up. The agency reported 19,350 firearm homicides in the U.S. in 2020, compared with 18,253 in 1993. This is important. The first year for which the Bureau of Justice, Justice Statistics data are available, although the per capita death toll was higher that year. Because we've had a couple more people born in the 30 years and the data was collected because the actual percentage was lower. Really important, but they don't highlight that. Let's keep going. Gun homicides increased across every age group and ethnicity, as well as in rural, suburban, and metropolitan area. Quote, the increase was disproportionately felt by non-Hispanic black males between ages 10 and 44, however. Rates of firearm homicide were higher at higher poverty levels, where they also showed larger increases. Now, here's the first little uh, clue. If it was all the guns and firearms were the problem, you would see a equally um, proportional increase across the board, but it's not. It's at the lower income level or the poverty level because it's crime related. That's your first clue. Let's keep going. But what does this data actually say? Like I said, I'm picking out the pieces that are really pertinent. <laughs> the extreme prevalence of guns in the U.S. makes comparing firearm homicide rates in America with those in other countries difficult. It's a big tell right here. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, however, compared overall homicide rates during the early months of the pandemic in several countries. That's a big hint. In most cases, homicides fell sharply during the early stages of the pandemic when lockdowns were in full force across all the nations. That's also in the United States. Here's the giveaway. In most countries, the homicide rate rebounded later in the year, bringing numbers back toward recent averages, so going back to that high level. Some countries, such as Spain, South Africa, and Kazakhstan, experienced sharp increases in the homicide rate in the latter part of 2020. Well, that's weird because I don't remember a big gun buying boom in any of those countries, Spain, South Africa, or Kazakhstan. That's weird because, if again, if it was linked to gun purchases, then there would be a, a correlating increase across the board. But there isn't. I'm going to keep going. Because the murders were there, but the guns weren't. Isn't that weird? Causes are unclear. In discussing its findings, the CDC said the data do not support any specific claims about why gun homicides rose as sharply as they did in 2020. Note, the CDC says there's no causal relationship, which honestly is kind of shocking to me. But all the left-wing media outlets, all they're saying is it's gun's fault. It's clearly the gun's fault. 
I just laid out for you in multiple countries where there wasn't a gun boom, there was also a rise in a homicide rate. How do you explain that? You can't, you don't, because you ignore it. Anyway, this last piece, this is big. Quote, the finding of this study do not support causal inferences and reasons for increasing rates and widening inequities are unclear and potentially complex, the agency said. Among a number of possible drivers, it said, were increased stress and, quote, disruptions in health, social, and emergency services during the COVID-19 pandemic, damaged relationships between communities and law enforcement agencies, wonder what that was about, increases in firearm purchases, and the exacerbation of long-standing economic disparities in high-risk communities. Okay, all of those, fine. The increase in firearm purchases is completely refuted by the idea earlier in this article, number one. It, there have been numerous guns that have been increasing over time since 1990s. Well, we've had a decline in crime until all of a sudden. Well, so that's obviously not the firearm because the firearm kept on going like this and the crime went like this and then it bounced back up. Isn't that weird how that works? So it's obviously not the guns from that point. The second point, they had saw the exact same homicide spikes in countries that don't have gun rights and didn't have gun booms. So the idea that all of this is because firearms and gun purchasing and the Americans have unfettered access to firearms and it's just a terrible idea is complete crap. And this article is a really good example of when you read all the details, you can actually see that it might just be the people element, not the inanimate object. But you're going to see this touted, and that is how I refute them. Hopefully it helps. Let me know what you guys think in the comments field below, and I'll see you tomorrow morning on The Bullet Points. I'm Braden. See you later.